Chapters 1 through 10 of the Second Book of Samuel from the World English Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by J. A. Carter. www.pleonic.com. The Second Book of Samuel from the World English Bible. Chapters 1 through 10. Chapter 1. It happened after the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had stayed two days in Ziklag, it happened on the third day that, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes torn and earth on his head. And so it was when he came to David that he fell to the earth and showed respect. David said to him, Where do you come from? He said to him, I have escaped out of the camp of Israel. David said to him, how did it go please tell me he answered the people have fled from the battle and many of the people also have fallen and are dead and saul and jonathan his son are dead also david said to the young man who told him how do you know that saul and jonathan his son are dead the young man who told him said as i happened by chance on mount gilboa behold saul was leaning on his spear and behold the chariots and the horsemen followed hard after him when he looked behind him, he saw me and called to me. I answered, Here I am. He said to me, Who are you? I answered him, I am an Amalekite. He said to me, Please stand beside me and kill me, for anguish has taken hold of me, because my life is yet whole in me. So I stood beside him and killed him, because I was sure that he could not live after he had fallen. I took the crown that was on his head and the bracelet that was on his arm and have brought them here to my Lord. Then David took hold of his clothes and tore them, and likewise all the men who were with him. They mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Saul and for Jonathan his son and for the people of Yahweh and for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the sword. David said to the young man who told him, Where are you from? He answered, I am the son of a foreigner, an Amalekite. David said to him, How were you not afraid to put forth your hand to destroy Yahweh's anointed? David called one of the young men and said, Go near and fall on him. He struck him so that he died. David said to him, Your blood be on your head, for your mouth has testified against you, saying, I have slain Yahweh's anointed. David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son. And he commanded them to teach the children of Judah the song of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. Your glory, Israel, is slain on your high places. How the mighty have fallen! Don't tell it in Gath, don't publish it in the streets of Ashkelon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. You mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew nor rain on you, neither fields of offerings. For there the shield of the mighty was vilely cast away. The shield of Saul was not anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, Jonathan's bow didn't turn back. Saul's sword didn't return empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives. In their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. You daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet delicately, who put ornaments of gold on your clothing. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of battle? Jonathan is slain on your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. You have been very pleasant to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How are the mighty fallen, and the weapons of war perished? Chapter 2. It happened after this that David inquired of Yahweh, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? Yahweh said to him, Go up. David said, Where shall I go up? He said, To Hebron. So David went up there, and his two wives also, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess, and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. David brought up his men who were with him, every man with his household. They lived in the cities of Hebron. The men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. They told David, saying, 
The men of Jabesh-Gilead were those who buried Saul. David sent messengers to the men of Jabesh-Gilead, and said to them, Blessed are you by Yahweh, that you have shown this kindness to your Lord, even to Saul, and have buried him. Now may Yahweh show loving kindness and truth to you. I also will reward you for this kindness, because you have done this thing. Now therefore let your hands be strong and be valiant, for Saul your Lord is dead, and also the house of Judah have anointed me king over them. Now Abner, the son of Ner, captain of Saul's army, had taken Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and brought him over to Mahanaim. And he made him king over Gilead, and over the Asherites, and over Jezreel, and over Ephraim, and over Benjamin, and over all Israel. Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and he reigned two years. But the house of Judah followed David. The time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. Abner the son of Ner and the servants of Ishbosheth the son of Saul went out from Mahanaim to Gibeon. Joab the son of Zeruiah and the servants of David went out and met them by the pool of Gibeon, and they sat down, the one on the one side of the pool and the other on the other side of the pool. Abner said to Joab, Please let the young men arise and play before us. Joab said, Let them arise. Then they arose and went over by number, twelve for Benjamin, and for Ishbosheth the son of Saul, and twelve of the servants of David. They each caught his opponent by the head and thrust his sword in his fellow's side, so they fell down together. Therefore that place was called Helkath Hatzurim, which is in Gibeon. The battle was very severe that day, and Abner was beaten, and the men of Israel before the servants of David. The three sons of Zeruiah were there, Joab, and Abishai, and Asahel. And Asahel was as light of foot as a wild gazelle. Asahel pursued after Abner, and in going he didn't turn to the right hand or to the left from following Abner. Then Abner looked behind him and said, Is it you, Asahel? He answered, It is I. Abner said to him, Turn aside to your right hand or to your left, and grab one of the young men and take his armor. But Asahel would not turn aside from following him. Abner said again to Asahel, Turn aside from following me. Why should I strike you to the ground? How then should I hold up my face to Joab, your brother? However, he refused to turn aside. Therefore Abner, with the back end of the spear, struck him in the body, so that the spear came out behind him, and he fell down there and died in the same place. It happened that as many as came to the place where Asahel fell down and died stood still. But Joab and Abishai pursued after Abner, and the sun went down when they had come to the hill of Amma that lies before Gia by the way of the wilderness of Gibeon. The children of Benjamin gathered themselves together after Abner and became one band and stood on the top of a hill. Then Abner called to Joab and said, Shall the sword devour for ever? Don't you know that it will be bitterness in the latter end? How long shall it be, then, before you ask the people to return from following their brothers? Joab said, As God lives, if you had not spoken, surely then in the morning the people would have gone away, and not each followed his brother. So Joab blew the trumpet, and all the people stood still, and pursued after Israel no more, neither fought they any more. Abner and his men went all that night through the Arabah, and they passed over the Jordan, and went through all Bithron, and came to Mahanaim. Joab returned from following Abner, and when he had gathered all the people together, there lacked of David's servants nineteen men and Asahel. But the servants of David had struck of Benjamin and of Abner's men, so that three hundred sixty men died. They took up Asahel, and buried him in the tomb of his father, which was in Bethlehem. Joab and his men went all night, and the day broke on them. At Hebron. Chapter 3 Now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. And David grew stronger and stronger, but the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. To David were sons born in Hebron, and his firstborn was Amnon of Ahinoam the Jezreelitess, and his second Chiliab of Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite, and the third Absalom the son of Maaka the daughter of Talmai king of Geshur and the fourth Adonijah, the son of Hagith, and the fifth Shephatiah, the son of Abital, and the sixth Ithraim of Eglah, David's wife. 
These were born to David in Hebron. It happened, while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, that Abner made himself strong in the house of Saul. Now Saul had a concubine whose name was Ritzbah, the daughter of Aiah, and Ishbosheth said to Abner, Why have you gone into my father's concubine? Then was Abner very angry for the words of Ishbosheth, and said, Am I a dog's head that belongs to Judah? Today I show kindness to the house of Saul your father, to his brothers and to his friends, and have not delivered you into the hand of David. And yet you charge me this day with a fault concerning this woman? God do so to Abner, and more also, if, as Yahweh has sworn to David, I don't do even so to him, to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul, and to set up the throne of David over Israel, and over Judah, from Dan even to Beersheba. He could not answer Abner another word, because he feared him. Abner sent messengers to David on his behalf, saying, Whose is the land? And saying, Make your alliance with me, and behold, my hand shall be with you, to bring all Israel around to you. He said, Good, I will make a treaty with you. But one thing I require of you, that is, you shall not see my face, unless you first bring Michael, Saul's daughter, when you come to see my face. David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Deliver me my wife Michael, whom I pledged to be married to me for one hundred foreskins of the Philistines. Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, even from Paltiel, the son of Laish. Her husband went with her, weeping as he went, and followed her to Bahurim. Then Abner said to him, Go, return. And he returned. Abner had communication with the elders of Israel, saying, In times past you sought for David to be king over you. Now then do it, for Yahweh has spoken of David, saying, by the hand of my servant David I will save my people Israel out of the hand of the Philistines, and out of the hand of all their enemies. Abner also spoke in the ears of Benjamin, and Abner went also to speak in the ears of David in Hebron all that seemed good to Israel, and to the whole house of Benjamin. So Abner came to David, to Hebron, and twenty men with him. David made Abner and the men who were with him a feast. Abner said to David, I will arise and go, and will gather all Israel to my lord the king, that they may make a covenant with you, and that you may reign over all that your soul desires. David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. Behold, the servants of David and Joab came from a foray, and brought in a great spoil with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he was gone in peace. When Joab and all the army who was with him had come, they told Joab, saying, Abner the son of Ner came to the king, and he has sent him away, and he has gone in peace. Then Joab came to the king, and said, What have you done? Behold, Abner came to you. Why is it that you have sent him away, and he is quite gone? You know Abner the son of Ner, that he came to deceive you, and to know your going out and your coming in, and to know all that you do. When Joab had come out from David, he sent messengers after Abner, and they brought him back from the well of Sirah. But David didn't know it. When Abner was returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside into the midst of the gate to speak with him quietly, and struck him there in the body, so that he died for the blood of Asahel his brother. Afterward, when David heard it, he said, I and my kingdom are guiltless before Yahweh for ever of the blood of Abner the son of Ner. Let it fall on the head of Joab and on all his father's house. Let there not fail from the house of Joab one who has an issue, or who is a leper, or who leans on a staff, or who falls by the sword, or who lacks bread. So Joab and Abishai his brother killed Abner, because he had killed their brother Asahel at Gibeon in the battle. David said to Joab, and to all the people who were with him, Tear your clothes, and clothe yourselves with sackcloth, and mourn before Abner. King David followed the bier. They buried Abner in Hebron, and the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner, and all the people wept. The king lamented for Abner, and said, Should Abner die as a fool dies? Your hands were not bound, nor your feet put into fetters. As a man falls before the children of iniquity, so you fell. All the people wept again over him. All the people came to cause David to eat bread while it was yet day. But David swore, saying, God do so to me, and more also if I taste bread or anything else until the sun goes down. All the people took notice of it, and it pleased them, as whatever the king did pleased all the people. 
So all the people and all Israel understood that day that it was not of the king to kill Abner the son of Ner. The king said to his servants, Don't you know that there a prince and a great man has fallen this day in Israel? I am this day weak, though anointed king, and these men, the sons of Zeruiah, are too hard for me. May Yahweh reward the evildoer according to his wickedness. Chapter 4 When Saul's son heard that Abner was dead in Hebron, his hands became feeble, and all the Israelites were troubled. Saul's son had two men who were captains of bands. The name of the one was Baana, and the name of the other Rechab, the sons of Rimon the Berathite, of the children of Benjamin. For Berath also is reckoned to Benjamin, and the Berathites fled to Gitaim, and have lived as foreigners there until this day. Now Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son who was lame of his feet. He was five years old when the news came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel, and his nurse took him up and fled, and it happened as she made haste to flee that he fell and became lame. His name was Mephibosheth. The sons of Rimon the Berathite, Rechab and Baana, went and came about the heat of the day to the house of Ishbosheth as he took his rest at noon. They came there into the midst of the house as though they would have fetched wheat, and they struck him in the body and Rechab and Baana his brother escaped. Now when they came into the house, as he lay on his bed in his bedroom, they struck him, and killed him, and beheaded him, and took his head, and went by the way of the Arabah all night. They brought the head of Ishbosheth to David, to Hebron, and said to the king, Behold, the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, your enemy, who sought your life. Yahweh has avenged my lord the king this day of Saul and of his seed. David answered Rechab and Baana, his brother, the sons of Rimon the Berathite, and said to them, As Yahweh lives, who has redeemed my soul out of all adversity, when some one told me, Behold, Saul is dead, thinking to have brought good news, I took hold of him and killed him in Ziklag, which was the reward I gave him for his news. How much more, when wicked men have slain a righteous person in his own house on his bed, shall I not now require his blood of your hand, and take you away from the earth? David commanded his young men, and they killed them, and cut off their hands and their feet, and hanged them up beside the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in the grave of Abner in Hebron. Chapter 5 Then came all the tribes of Israel to David, to Hebron, and spoke, saying, Behold, we are your bone and your flesh. In times past, when Saul was king over us, it was you who led out and brought in Israel. Yahweh said to you, You shall be shepherd of my people Israel, and you shall be prince over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king, to Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them in Hebron before Yahweh. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years. In Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned thirty-three years over all Israel and Judah. The king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who spoke to David, saying, Unless you take away the blind and the lame, you shall not come in here, thinking, David can't come in here. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, the same as the city of David. David said on that day, Whoever strikes the Jebusites, let him get up to the watercourse and strike the lame and the blind, who are hated by David's soul. Therefore they say, The blind and the lame can't come into the house. David lived in the stronghold and called it the city of David. David built around from Milo and inward. David grew greater and greater, for Yahweh, the God of armies, was with him. Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, and cedar trees, and carpenters, and masons, and they built David a house. David perceived that Yahweh had established him king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. David took him more concubines and wives out of Jerusalem, after he had come from Hebron, and there were yet sons and daughters born to David. These are the names of those who were born to him in Jerusalem. Shamua, and Shobab, and Nathan, and Solomon, and Ibhar, and Elishua, and Nepheg, and Japhia, and Elishama, and Eliada, and Eliphalet. When the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, 
all the Philistines went up to seek David. And David heard of it, and went down to the stronghold. Now the Philistines had come, and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. David inquired of Yahweh, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? Yahweh said to David, Go up, for I will certainly deliver the Philistines into your hand. David came to baal Perazim, and David struck them there, and he said, Yahweh has broken my enemies before me like the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place baal Perazim. They left their images there, and David and his men took them away. The Philistines came up yet again, and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. When David inquired of Yahweh, he said, You shall not go up. Circle around behind them, and attack them over against the mulberry trees. It shall be, when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then you shall stir yourself up, for then Yahweh has gone out before you to strike the army of the Philistines. David did so, as Yahweh commanded him, and struck the Philistines from Geba until you come to Gezer. Chapter 6 David again gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, thirty thousand. David arose and went with all the people who were with him from Baal of Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name, even the name of Yahweh of armies, who sits above the cherubim. They set the ark of God on a new cart, and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in the hill. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. They brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was in the hill, with the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. David and all the house of Israel played before Yahweh with all kinds of instruments made of fir wood, and with harps, and with stringed instruments, and with tambourines, and with castanets, and with cymbals. When they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached for the ark of God and took hold of it, for the cattle stumbled. The anger of Yahweh was kindled against Uzzah, and God struck him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. David was displeased, because Yahweh had broken forth on Uzzah, and he called that place Perez Uzzah to this day. David was afraid of Yahweh that day, and he said, How shall the ark of Yahweh come to me? So David would not move the ark of Yahweh to be with him in the city of David, but David carried it aside to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of Yahweh remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months, and Yahweh blessed Obed-Edom and all his house. It was told King David, saying, Yahweh has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that pertains to him because of the ark of God. David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with joy. It was so that when those who bore the ark of Yahweh had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fattened calf. David danced before Yahweh with all his might, and David was clothed in a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of Yahweh with shouting, and with the sound of the trumpet. It was so, as the ark of Yahweh came into the city of David, that Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked out at the window, and saw King David leaping and dancing before Yahweh, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of Yahweh, and set it in its place, in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before Yahweh. When David had made an end of offering the burnt offering and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of Yahweh of armies. He gave to all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to every one, a portion of bread, dates, and raisins. So all the people departed, every one to his house, and then David returned to bless his household. Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, how glorious the king of Israel was today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. David said to Michael, It was before Yahweh, who chose me above your father and above all his house, to appoint me prince over the people of Yahweh, over Israel. Therefore I will celebrate before Yahweh. I will be yet more vile than this, and will be base in my own sight but of the handmaids of whom you have spoken, they shall honor me. Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child to the day of her death. Chapter 7 It happened, when the king lived in his house, and Yahweh had given him rest from all his enemies all around, that the king said to Nathan the prophet, 
See, now I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells within curtains. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for Yahweh is with you. It happened the same night that the word of Yahweh came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says Yahweh, Shall you build me a house for me to dwell in? For I have not lived in a house since the day that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have moved around in a tent and in a tabernacle. In all places in which I have walked with all the children of Israel, did I say a word to any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to be shepherd of my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, you shall tell my servant David this. Thus says Yahweh of armies, I took you from the sheep pen, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people, over Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. I will make you a great name, like the name of the great ones who are in the earth. I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in their own place and be moved no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more, as at the first, and as from the day that I commanded judges to be over the people of Israel. I will cause you to rest from all your enemies. Moreover, Yahweh tells you that Yahweh will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled, and you shall sleep with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, who shall proceed out of your bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom for ever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my loving kindness shall not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away before you. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure for ever before you. Your throne shall be established for ever. According to all these words, and according to all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. Then David the king went in and sat before Yahweh, and he said, Who am I, Lord Yahweh, and what is my house that you have brought me thus far? This was yet a small thing in your eyes, Lord Yahweh, but you have spoken also of your servant's house for a great while to come, and this after the way of men, Lord Yahweh. What more can David say to you? For you know your servant, Lord Yahweh. For your word's sake, and according to your own heart, you have worked all this greatness to make your servant know it. Therefore you are great, Yahweh God, for there is none like you, neither is there any God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. But one nation in the earth is like your people, even like Israel, whom God went to redeem to himself for a people, and to make himself a name, and to do great things for you, and awesome things for your land before your people whom you redeem to yourself out of Egypt, from the nations and their gods. You established for yourself your people Israel to be a people to you for ever, and you, Yahweh, became their God. Now, Yahweh God, the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, confirm it for ever, and do as you have spoken. Let your name be magnified for ever, saying, Yahweh of armies is God over Israel, and the house of your servant David shall be established before you. For you, Yahweh of armies, the God of Israel, have revealed to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore your servant has found in his heart to pray this prayer to you. Now, O Lord Yahweh, you are God, and your words are truth, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now, therefore, let it please you to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue for ever before you. For you, Lord Yahweh, have spoken it. Let the house of your servant be blessed for ever with your blessing. Chapter 8 After this, it happened that David struck the Philistines and subdued them, and David took the bridle of the mother city out of the hand of the Philistines. He struck Moab and measured them with the line, making them to lie down on the ground. And he measured two lines to put to death, and one full line to keep alive. The Moabites became servants to David, and brought tribute. David struck also Hadadezer, the son of Rehob, the king of Zobah, and he went to recover his dominion at the river. David took from him one thousand seven hundred horsemen and twenty thousand footmen. 
and david hamstrung all the chariot horses but reserved of them for one hundred chariots when the syrians of damascus came to help hadadezer king of zobah david struck of the syrians two and twenty thousand men then david put garrisons in syria of damascus and the syrians became servants to david and brought tribute yahweh gave victory to david wherever he went david took the shields of gold that were on the servants of hadadezer and brought them to jerusalem from beta and from berothai cities of hadadezer king david took exceeding much brass when toi king of hamath heard that david had struck all the army of hadadezer then toi sent joram his son to king david to greet him and to bless him because he had fought against hadadezer and struck him for hadadezer had wars with toi joram brought with him vessels of silver and vessels of gold and vessels of brass king david also dedicated these to yahweh with the silver and gold that he dedicated of all the nations which he subdued of syria and of moab and of the children of ammon and of the philistines and of amalek and of the spoil of hadadezer son of rehob king of zobah david earned a reputation when he returned from smiting the syrians in the valley of salt even eighteen thousand men he put garrisons in edom throughout all edom put he garrisons and all the edomites became servants to david yahweh gave victory to david wherever he went david reigned over all israel and david executed judgment and righteousness to all his people joab the son of zeruiah was over the army and jehoshaphat the son of aliud was recorder and zadok the son of ahitub and ahimelech the son of abiathar were priests and benaiah the son of jehoiada was over the carathites and the pelathites and david's sons were chief ministers chapter nine david said is there yet any who is left of the house of saul that i may show him kindness for jonathan's sake there was of the house of saul a servant whose name was ziba and they called him to david and the king said to him are you ziba he said your servant is he the king said is there not yet any of the house of saul that i may show the kindness of god to him ziba said to the king jonathan has yet a son who is lame of his feet the king said to him where is he ziba said to the king behold he is in the house of machir the son of amiel in lo debar then david sent and fetched him out of the house of machir the son of amiel from lo debar mephibosheth the son of jonathan the son of saul came to david and fell on his face and showed respect david said mephibosheth he answered behold your servant david said to him don't be afraid of him for i will surely show you kindness for jonathan your father's sake I will restore to you all the land of Saul your father. You shall eat bread at my table continually. He bowed down and said, What is your servant, that you should look on such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called to Seba, Saul's servant, and said to him, All that pertain to Saul and to all his house have I given to your master's son. You shall till the land for him, you and your sons and your servants, and you shall bring in the harvest that your master's son may have bread to eat but mephibosheth your master's son shall eat bread always at my table now ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants then ziba said to the king according to all that my lord the king commands his servant so shall your servant do so mephibosheth ate at the king's table like one of the king's sons mephibosheth had a young son whose name was micah all that lived in the house of ziba were servants to mephibosheth so mephibosheth lived in jerusalem for he ate continually at the king's table he was lame in both his feet chapter ten it happened after this that the king of the children of ammon died and hanun his son reigned in his place david said i will show kindness to hanun the son of nahash as his father showed kindness to me so david sent by his servants to comfort him concerning his father david's servants came into the land of the children of ammon but the princes of the children of ammon said to hanun their lord do you think that david honors your father in that he has sent comforters to you hasn't david sent his servants to you to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it so hanun took david's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle even to their buttocks and sent them away when they told it to david he sent to meet them 
for the men were greatly ashamed. The king said, Wait at Jericho until your beards have grown, and then return. When the children of Ammon saw that they were become odious to David, the children of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Beth Rehob and the Syrians of Zobah, twenty thousand footmen, and the king of Maacah with one thousand men, and the men of Tob, twelve thousand men. When David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the army of the mighty men. The children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array at the entrance of the gate. And the Syrians of Zobah and of Rehob and the men of Tob and Maacah were by themselves in the field. Now when Joab saw that the battle was set against him before and behind, he chose of all the choice men of Israel and put them in array against the Syrians. The rest of the people he committed into the hand of Abishai his brother, and he put them in array against the children of Ammon. He said, If the Syrians are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if the children of Ammon are too strong for you, then I will come and help you. Be courageous, and let us be strong for our people and for the cities of our God, and Yahweh do that which seems good to him. So Joab and the people who were with him drew near to the battle against the Syrians, and they fled before him. When the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians had fled, they likewise fled before Abishai and entered into the city. Then Joab returned from the children of Ammon and came to Jerusalem. When the Syrians saw that they were defeated by Israel, they gathered themselves together. Hadadezer sent and brought out the Syrians who were beyond the river, and they came to Helam, with Shobach, the captain of the army of Hadadezer, at their head. It was told David, and he gathered all Israel together, and passed over the Jordan, and came to Helam. The Syrians set themselves in array against David, and fought with him. The Syrians fled before Israel, and David killed of the Syrians seven hundred charioteers and forty thousand horsemen, and struck Shobach, the captain of their army, so that he died there. When all the kings who were servants of Hadadezer saw that they were defeated before Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians feared to help the children of Ammon any more. End of chapters 1 through 10 of the second book of Samuel